Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Pits of Motor Calf. This is your host, Dave. We got special guest, drag racer, sturgeon, fisherman, Daniel Cottrell. How are you doing, Daniel? Oh, pretty good. <laughs> drag racer and sturgeon fisherman. I love it. The sturgeon whisperer. Yeah, that's what they tend to call me these days. My wife started that, and it kind of just caught on and... Somehow, some way, we became uh, fishing celebrities, and it's been pretty cool. Yeah, I've looked at all your pictures you get, and watched your videos. There, you get, get some big ones out there, man. Well, you know, two about two and a half weeks ago, we went out. hadn't been out for ten weeks, and uh, we got we hooked eleven fish and we landed eleven fish. But we caught we landed our biggest one ever. It was a twelve foot sturgeon from tip to tail. Wow. And I'll tell you what, that one was a monster. And I mean, we've caught some big ones, but, and that was our, uh, normally we catch big ones in the daytime, but this was in the dark. And it, uh, when that thing first broke water, I just, I was beside myself. I said, hon, this is a big one. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> once you realize how big a fish you got on there, then you're just trying not to screw it up so you can get a couple pictures of it. <laughs> right. So did, did, you, did you actually land the thing on the boat or did you let it off on the water? Oh, no, no. It uh, it was way too big to get on the boat. Uh, in fact, after, uh, I think after 68 or 72 inches, you're not supposed to pull them out of the water. But uh, I got, uh, I wasn't even able to get the hook out of his mouth. So I reached down there and got as close to the hook as I could and I cut the hook off. And uh, we let him go to keep... Uh, keep from bothering them any, any more than we did and it only takes them a couple days to get rid of that hook because they're barbless so so how, so how many years you been uh stur sturgeon fishing well this is uh this is a, I, you know i've been catching sturgeon as long as i can remember but uh i would catch sturgeon on accident when i was striper fishing but we started actually fishing for sturgeon four years ago um I got my boat all put back together because with my wife having MS and not being able to walk, I wanted to have a full flat bottom in it so she was comfortable. And we went and bought some good seats and everything, and uh, we started going sturgeon fishing. And uh, it took us a while, but once we started catching them, man, we started catching them a lot. And uh, in the last four years, we're approaching probably 200, almost 200 fish land. Wow. So now, did you start fishing when you were a kid? Oh yeah, my my dad uh, he used to wake me up at three o'clock in the morning, and he he'd wake me up and say, "You go with me," and then I was either out of bed and getting dressed, or he'd leave me at home. So, and I loved going fishing with him. Hmm. So we uh, we'd go out fishing, and uh, everything that I know today uh, all goes back to what my dad taught me when I was a kid. I mean, I've uh, I've fine-tuned it a lot, and uh, yeah, my dad's coming out here on, on vacation with mom here in, a, in about a month, and uh, I told him, I said, well, if we got time to go sturgeon fishing, you know I'm going to go go lay a whooping on you and show you how to catch some sturgeon right. <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh, we're having a lot of fun with that. And, uh, you know, I send my dad all those pictures, and my mom will tell us, you know, he brags about you every time we go somewhere. He whips that phone out and shows off all the pictures of the fish you've been catching. Wow. That's good. But I couldn't do it without my wife because usually I'm staring out into the wind somewhere, and if she wasn't catching the bite when I was getting it, I'd miss them all. <laughs> well, that's great. You guys are a perfect team. Well, I... Everything, yeah. It uh, without my wife, I ain't nobody. You know, it uh, everything that I'm doing now. It, it um, I, to be honest, I, I was so screwed up for a long time, and then I met my wife, and everything just kind of fell into place. And uh, I got a career with uh, with O'Reilly Auto Parts where I'm working now, and uh, I had a. I owned a tree bit, tree removal business, and I was about on the verge of killing myself because I was taking such a beating all the time. And uh, she came to me and said, you know, I, the doctor told me I needed to change what I was doing. And she said, 
go get a regular job. So I did. And uh, it was the best move I've ever made. And uh, we're happy. And uh, we do a lot of fishing. Not as much now that we're building the race car. But, uh, I mean, we used to fish two times a week. And now we're lucky to get out once a month. Because uh, with the race car being built and then with COVID, we've, I've been so busy. I'm working six days a week and I get home and as soon as I sit in the chair, it's a guaranteed two hour nap before she wakes me up and says, come get me out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the race cars, uh, it's coming right along. Uh, the, in fact, the setback blower plate just got here today from Brad Littlefield of, of Littlefield blowers. And, uh, so we'll probably have the race car, all the fab work just about done on it here in the next 10 days or so. Now you said that's going to be an A-gas car? Yeah, it's going to be an A-gas car or a pro-gas car. It's it's pro-modified like. I mean, it, uh, it the only thing that's not pro-mod about it is it's an old chassis. Um, um, there was a gentleman named Leroy Filson here on uh, from Sacramento that uh, had the Mighty Mouse, uh, a bunch of Mighty Mouse race cars. Him and his wife Bonnie Filson, and he was uh, he was my best friend. He's like a second dad to me, and uh, I had the opportunity to buy his old car, and um, so I did. And uh, I could have bought a better car, but uh, this car has a lot of meaning to me, and I figured it, you know. Let's go pro gas racing with an old pro gas car, and uh, it's still too it's still too new to run Heritage A gas like down at the March meet and at the Hot Rod reunion and stuff. But it uh, they still they run a seven sixty heads up pro gas that uh, most of the cars are blown cars, and uh, then I could run uh, Nostalgia One and and uh, all those classes if I want. So. Uh, but once we get this car going, I've got a lot of street outlaw guys that are looking to buy it. And so we're going to, once we get it together and get racing, we're going to throw together a couple good eight-mile passes to see what it'll do and set the price of the car and end up selling it. And then we're going to buy a funny car, and we're going to end up uh, going Sitka funny car racing here on the West Coast. Oh, yeah, with the uh, Maher. Yeah, well, my cousin Bobby Costrell and my best friend Harvey Williams, they run uh they run the Sipka deal. It's uh they run at a thousand feet of five ninety heads up deal. And uh you know, Harvey's being one of my best friends and with Bobby Costrell running it it gives me a chance to race against the world champion Nitro Funny Car guy. No, my my heart's not running it no more. Who's that? I said J- James James Maher's not running the group no more. Yeah, James Maher's still running it. In fact, uh, him and Harvey Williams just ran against each other in the final last weekend at Samoa, and Harvey uh, Tony Trump beat him in the final. No, uh, no, I mean wasn't wasn't he like one of the you know guys that runs the whole group? Him and his dad. Yeah, it, they are. They uh, they sponsor the thing, and uh, they've got. Uh, there's all they always have at least eight cars and uh looking into the future it, uh there's rumblings that there's about another eight cars getting ready to come out and start running it so if we could uh we could end up having 16 car fields in that class that'd be a blast so how does it feel to be cousins with the great bobby Cottrell? uh well it's it's a blessing and a curse <laughs> Because before Bobby became world champion, I didn't have 5,000 friends all the time on Facebook. So I never had to worry about deleting people so I could add new people on my Facebook. But once he became world champion, all of a sudden I got my friends list is full all the way up all the time. And I told him, I put a post up, I said, you know, until Bobby became world champion, I never had a problem with having to delete people, so I blamed him for this. He said, not my fault. I said, oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> but, you know, um, Bobby and I didn't grow up together. In fact, um, I've known Bobby for 12 years. We met on Facebook uh, 
back in 2009 because when I first got on Facebook, I did a search of my last name. And Bobby was one of my first friends. Bobby and uh, Nancy Matter, uh, in fact, the same week, were two of my very first friends on Facebook. And then two years ago or three years ago, I finally actually met Bobby in person. And I was doing fine, not drag racing. I was perfectly happy not drag racing. And uh, But I took my wife down to the March meet. And we went down and we met Bobby and we hung out for the day and we watched him run. And uh, then we went home. And then after that, I came up with the idea. I said, you know some Bobby's going to be running for the world championship at the Hot Rod reunion, so... Let me get a hold of these guys and see if they want to let me come down and I'll make gumbo on Friday night at the track and then barbecue and we'll have a big celebration dinner on Sunday. Well, my wife enjoyed it so much, now we have a race car. <laughs> so I blame Bobby for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Bobby's the one that got you into drag racing. No, my dad got me into drag racing. I'm uh, my dad is a three-time Northern California Pro Gas champion. Uh, Pro Gas originated in Sacramento, California, back in uh, back in the seventies, and uh, you had uh, Dave Riolo, Bob Bunker, Leroy, and Bonnie Filson. You know those were the those were the core guys that ran Pro Gas, and then in '79. My dad and my uncles uh, bought a car from Greg Boutte, and um, we bought it to run 955 Pro Gas, and we started running that, and my dad was good at it instantly, and then we made improvements to the car, and he kept getting better, and then it got to where we'd show up to the race, and when we pulled in the gate, people would go, oh shit, Cliff Cottrell's here. And because uh, they knew they were going to have a battle on their hands, and my my dad was pretty good. He won three championships in uh, pro gas here locally at Sacramento, and we'd go and run some out of town races. And even when he was winning and winning pro gas championships, he was still bracket racing. Wow! So he was my dad was known as a a, a true drag racer and. I loved bracket racing. That's what I did. If there was a race on the West Coast that I could get to on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'd be gone racing. And uh, all I did was bracket race. And then I started getting into dragsters and running dragsters. And I even had an opportunity for a, a, a little over a year period of time where I was flying out of Sacramento and going and driving people's car at new tracks. And I had a deal where every, it seemed like every time I went to a track for the first time, I'd win. And uh, so I won a lot of races, and uh, I had a lot of fun going out bracket racing and around the whole country, and it uh, that lasted for about 14 or 15 months. And then uh, things here in Sacramento, when my life changed, and I started making bad decisions, and all of a sudden, I wasn't racing that much anymore, and then... I bought my own car, ran it a few times, won a couple races with it, and then I ended up uh, getting a divorce, and uh, so I sold the car. And once I sold the car, uh, I won a couple. I ran a couple more races. I and my last drag race was actually up at Redding, California, at the Redding Drag Strip out at the airport. And my last race was my last win. Wow. So, and that was two weeks ago, uh, was 21 years ago. And, uh, so I haven't even sat in a car, let alone raced a car in 21 years. So, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do a lot of testing and, uh, we're gonna try to make sure everything's right and we're gonna do our best to go out and win our first race back. Now that dragster, you were driving now the gas, gas dragster? Yeah, that was a C Connell Dragster. It ran 770s at about 184 miles an hour. Nice. Did you have any success driving the Dragster? Um, in Dragsters, I probably won, I don't know, I probably 16, 17 races running, running rear engine Dragsters. And then uh, the rest of 
my wins all came in ET cars, um, you know, running bracket two and bracket three. Right. And I used to drag race the car I drove to work every day. Yeah. And I, when the weekend came that it was time to go racing somewhere, I'd throw an ice chest, a uh, tent, a sleeping bag, and some clothes in my vehicle, and I'd leave work and head straight for wherever I was going. And sometimes I'd run in Sacramento on Friday and uh, Oroville or Ratting on Saturday and end up up at Samoa on Sunday or at Medford, Oregon on Sunday. I was down at Palmdale one, one weekend, and I won all three races that weekend and then I got flat tires going home from Palmdale and I had to spend all my wind money on a new set of tires so I could get home. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But I used to, I, if there was a race somewhere, I was there. And uh, I lived, eat and breathe drag racing and to the point where my dad told me, you know, there's more to life than drag racing. And uh, I had gone to work for McClellan Air Force Base is, is civil service and uh, Brad Anderson when he was running Top Alcohol Funny Card offered me a job to go on tour with him and I I turned him down because I was afraid it would upset my dad because he had worked so hard to get me the job out of McClellan and when my dad found out he was a little upset with me that I didn't take that job and then when I tried to go back and get the job the job was already done and that was my last opportunity back then that I had the opportunity to do what I dreamed of. Yeah. But yeah. we're going to do it now because my wife wants to be a backup girl. Yeah, so 21 year hiatus, right? Yep, 21 years. It, uh, two weeks ago was 21 years since I've driven a race car. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it stays in your blood, man. Even though know, you took that 21 years off, it's drag racing stays in your blood, man. Well, yeah, it, uh, like I said, I was perfectly happy not racing and going fishing all the time. I said, and then we go, we decide to go racing to have a little fun with Bobby. And, uh, I started running into all the people that I used to race with that are still doing it. And, uh, I, I people started asking me, why aren't you racing a car anymore? And, uh, it just opportunity's not there anymore. I said, well, why don't you make the opportunity there? And, my mom passed last September on the 18th, and um, we ended up with a sizable amount of money after uh, my sister and I sold and split up her estate. And uh, my wife said, let's go racing. You know, I want to be a backup girl. She's got that electric scooter of hers, and, you know, her and Heidi, Heidi Austin are really good friends. And uh, she said, I want to do what Heidi Austin does. <laughs> I want to back you up. So... We're going to find a way. Uh, all the tracks we're going to run, I've already gotten their permission that they're going to let her out on the track on her scooter. So with my sister's help, she'll be backing me up after the burnout. And uh, as long as she's having fun, we'll keep doing it. And we're hoping that uh, we'll use this as a stepping stone to get me into a nitro funny car so I, I can actually race against Bobby. Ah, there you go. But that's, that's the... I've been talking with people for quite a long time, and uh, now it's a matter of, well, let's see how you do in your car, and then we'll uh, we'll talk about it some more. So, you know, and I don't want nothing for it. I just don't want it to cost me nothing. But I want to be able to. I want to have a chance to win, and if I get the opportunity that I can pull up to the starting line against my cousin Bobby, you can bet I'm going to give him everything I've got. Uh, he'll probably whoop my butt, but. Uh, if there's any way I can get around him, I'm going to do my best to do it. Yeah, yeah, Bucky's got that kind of flying, man. Well, Bucky's no different now than when I was racing with him when I was a kid. And he's just, you know, he's got a notebook. Bucky Austin's got a notebook two inches thick of what not to do. <laughs> you know, and uh, he, he, he's been doing it so long. And then him and Bobby are such a perfect pairing. And I mean, to sit and watch Bobby walk, work on the car between rounds, to me, is just amazing because I have some of the same skills as Bobby does, but I just look at him in awe as I watch him maintenance the car between rounds and get ready to go racing. And then he jumps in the car and drives it fresh as a daisy, and the guy is just so good. I mean, 
he's so grounded, he's so level headed, and he's just good. And it, uh, the fact that I get to call him my cousin is just a little icing on the cake. Because I'll tell you what, I'm so very proud of him, and I, I just, uh, I just hope that uh, I can do my family's name proud in what I'm running as, as he's doing and what he's running. Yep. Now, besides your dad being, uh, you know, a big inspiration to you for drag racing, did you have any other drivers that inspired you back in the day? Well, I grew up working for Dave Smith that owns Sacramento Raceway. And uh, so not only have, have I got to know some of the big names you still see in the sport now, I've been friends with them. And, uh, you know, John Force and Don Perdome. uh I've known since before I could drive. And I've always been a John Force and Don the Snake for Dome fan. And, uh, you know, it, it, uh, I've had a lot of people that uh, I wanted to be like, but my dad was my biggest. Uh, in my in, in my book, if my dad had had the chance to run with those guys in those the nitro cars, I feel like my dad would have beat them too. But Leroy Filson that uh, owned the car and built the car that I've got now originally, I think uh, I think he might have been one of my biggest uh, biggest supporters. Uh, he expected me to do a lot bigger things than I did in drag racing, but he had more uh, more faith in me than uh, than I had in myself. I think, and uh, he expected me to do big things and. Uh, my dad was never really that impressed with uh, what I did for actor racing, but Leroy was, and uh, he always wanted me to stick with it, and he was always trying to put me in a position to to further my career, but uh, I wasn't focused enough back then to do anything with it, and hell, even right now, we're not trying to go win any championships or anything. We're just trying to go racing and go have some fun. I want my wife to be able to enjoy and experience drag racing as a family the way we used to do it right yeah it's a beautiful thing yeah well she's uh she's don't re you know she's the reason this is happening because without her saying let's go racing i wouldn't have done it i mean i thought about it but uh to me it was uh it was out of reach right. but a year ago today a year ago from today if you would have told me that our car would be a couple of weeks from getting ready, getting it ready to fire. I'd have told you you were crazy. So it's it's all happened pretty fast, but you know we're coming up on the anniversary of my mother's death on September 18th, and it uh, that kind of hit me today. And uh, I, my mother loved drag racing. The happiest I ever remember seeing her was at the drag strip, and uh, she was one of my dad's biggest supporters and biggest fans, and. Uh, it just, uh, I'm sorry that her and Leroy won't both be here to see this. No, they'll be there in spirit. That's what I'm told. So hopefully I don't do anything to embarrass myself. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I have a feeling right now I'm probably a lot better fisherman than I am a drag racer. So <laughs> I'm hoping that, uh, like riding a bicycle... I can pick everything back up, but I didn't have a 510 inch blown alcohol motor with a 1471 supercharger on top of it before. I was just running gas, uh, normally right. aspirated gas engines back then. This is a whole new animal for me. <laughs> yeah. So, so what do you enjoy most about being a drag racer? The family, the family, the friendship, um, and to be to be completely and totally honest. At the racetrack, unlike the rest of the world, there ain't no racism. Right. They're, they're, everybody out at the track is my brother and my sister. And uh, once we get there and we uh, everybody unloads their cars and we get to racing, we're all just friends and brothers and sisters. And there's none of this crap you see in the political world going on right now at, at, at the drag strip. And uh, I've got some of my oldest friends are from the drag racing world. Um, and to me, I feel like we're all family because, you know, if, if the guy you've got to race next round breaks, 
you're over there trying to see if you can help him fix his car so we can go up and race for it the next round. We're not looking for a single win. And, uh, you know, that since I've started going racing with Bobby and, and Bucky Austin, that's the one thing I noticed. I thought that everybody had forgotten about me. And they didn't. It, uh, I had to, had to be reminded who were some people were, but, uh, you know, going down to Bakersfield and having all these people remember who I was and how much we used to race together and have, you know, enjoy our time together. It just, it made me realize that I hadn't been forgotten about. Yeah, that's so, a mo- most, most of the races I interview, I, they always say about the com- camaraderie in drag racing. Well, it is. It, uh, you know, it, it, once you get to the racetrack, it just, uh, you know, the, it's about whose food you're going to go steal after they get food made for lunch, you know? <laughs> I mean, and then, uh, like right now, we were getting ready to come up on the California reunion, and I got people messaging me, you making gumbo? Well, that's the plan. Well, now we're not because the Hot Rod Union has been canceled. But now I've got my drag racing famous gumbo going, you know, and everybody, when are you going to, we want some of that. And I said, well, I can make more. <laughs> Just uh, if you're going to come over and have a bowl, bring some beers with you and share it with the crew. <laughs> <laughs> you can explain it's something that you have to uh experience and any time that i've ever taken somebody to experience drag racing for the first time they were hooked yeah. didn't matter if we won or lost just the experience alone they wanted they were ready to go again and again and again after that and uh that's why i want my wife to experience what we used to and uh my dad lives in Arkansas, clear across the country, so he's not going to be here racing with us for the most part. But uh, my sister and my Uncle Mike, part of the original Cottrell Racing Team here in Sacramento, will be there with me. And uh, In fact, when I made the decision to do this, uh, I called them first. I said, we're going to go racing if you guys are on board. So if you want to go racing then we'll do this. But if you're not going to want to go racing, then we're not doing this. And they both said, yeah, we're on board. And uh, so that's why we decided to go ahead and do this because it, it uh, it's family, you know. And, and my sister and I, we grew up at the racetrack. And uh, she stayed a lot more involved in drag racing over the years than I have. But she, you know, and she kept me up to speed. But uh, I knew she wanted to go racing again. And, uh, I figured if one day if we had the opportunity, we'd do it. And, well, the opportunity's here. And we're, our original plan was to make our first race uh, September 18th here in Sacramento at the Governor's Cup, but we're not going to be ready for it. So uh, we're going to do some testing, and if we can make a race this year, we will. But uh, if we got to wait till next year to go compete, that's fine because that's just that more testing I can get under my belt. And, uh when we show up at the racetrack for the first time, hopefully we can put a whooping on them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the drag racing family just gets bigger and bigger all the time, man. Yeah, it does. And, uh, I, you know, when we announced that we, I had bought the car, my mess, my personal messaging just started lighting up and then my phone started ringing because people that had been involved with my family when we were on a pro gas, wanted to come get involved with us, even financially. And uh, I just was beside myself. You know, I'd tell my wife, I said, I can't believe that I haven't talked to these people in over 20 years. And here they are. They want to go racing with us again. And uh, the the support is just, I mean, people telling me, if you need something, call me. If, if, if I've got it, you can have it, you know. And uh, then I had people calling, wanting to sponsor the car. and I But I told everybody, let us get racing first let us get the car tested let us get racing and then next year if you still feel like you want to put some money in the car then i'll be glad to talk about it then but for now we just want to do this on our own so you know if, if we get into doing this and my wife decides she's not having fun then we're not going to do it I, I i won't do it unless she's enjoying herself yeah that last facebook account i had the one that got deactivated before i made a new one when i 
that that one had like almost four thousand friends, and my my wife would be like, "Man, you got too many friends. Why you got so many friends?" I'm like, "All these drag racing people keep sending me friend requests." I'm like, "Cause you just you, because I be doing all these interviews all the time." I'm like, yeah, well, this is yeah, you know, it's uh, it's yeah, you know, I, I I've got so many friends on Facebook. It uh, I finally got to where if you had something about drag racing or something about fishing, I just automatically accepted you. But now I got to take a look at who sent me French requests because I was able to sit down for two hours and I made two hundred and something deletions where I'm you know, somewhere around where I'm at now. Yeah. That was hard to do because even though I don't talk to them on a daily basis, each person I deleted, I remembered us having conversations or communication of some sort at some time. Yeah. Over the past year since I've been on Facebook. So, you know, I hate cutting anybody loose, but I had to make room. Right. And so now my wife and sister want me to make a new Facebook page that's just racing and fishing. But, hell, I kind of think that this one's just racing and fishing now. Yeah, you can make one, and, of, those, make one of those like pages. Well, I don't know if we're going to be that big. <laughs> I, you know, it, I, I, think the, I think once the newness of us going racing wears off, it'll probably be uh, nobody will even care about what we're doing. But, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy the, the Facebook that I put together now. And uh, I'm just afraid that if I did it again, it wouldn't be the same. And, you know, so many, everybody on my page is real excited because from the first time we fire the car in the garage till the first burnout and the first shakedown pass, all that's going to be live on Facebook. And uh, then my cousin Bobby Starnes will take those videos and transfer it over and put it on our YouTube page, page where the uh, all the fishing videos are. And so... I'm kind of fighting putting together another page, but I, if it uh, turns out to be a big deal, then I will. But I don't think I'm that big a deal. I, uh, I, I just, I'm just a nobody in Sacramento, California, that uh, has been fortunate enough to be you know, to grow up in the world of drag racing, doing it, being part of it, and working at the track out here for some twelve or fourteen years, and. Uh, I'm just a guy lucky enough to get to try to do it again. And uh, I want to keep it that way. I mean, in the future moving forward, if it was to get out of control big, then yeah, then I might do something. But I, you know, just like drag racing, people are my family. A lot of my Facebook folks have just kind of become my family too. And uh, even though I may not talk to them all the time, I, I feel a connection to most of them. And when I don't hear from somebody for a while, it, uh, you know, I think about it and, uh, I tend to send people messages to check to make sure they're okay. And, uh, it's, uh, I think I got rid of most of the liberals off my page too, cause I haven't seemed to be really making anybody mad that I get put in Facebook jail lately. So I must either be improving my behavior or getting, uh, rid of the people who shouldn't be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now, it, but I know my friend Nancy Matter. I was telling you about. Right. She's uh, we've been friends for twelve years, and her and I just met in person at Tulsa last September because we went to one of Bobby's races there. And uh, I was on the phone with her this week, and she's at Funny Car Chaos yep. racing tonight. And she sent me a text earlier that they just won first round, and she said, "Low ET, they're running eighth mile," and she went three ninety. So. You know, and I'm just so proud of her. She, I've been, I've watched her grow from her alcohol funny car days, and now into the nitro funny cars. And she, uh, she had a legend like Dale Poldy as part of her team, and everything. Just another step in the learning curve, and all that. And uh, Dale's not with them anymore, but uh, they're still running okay, and they're not breaking parts. And uh, so I'll be talking with her Monday or Tuesday, and she'll tell me how she did all weekend. And that was all because of Facebook, right? You know, that uh, you and I, yep. because of Facebook. Yep. And it, uh, I love it. It, uh, it can be a pain in the butt sometimes, but uh, I get up every morning. I, I get up an hour and a half before I have to get my wife up to put her to work, and uh, 
first thing I do is look at Facebook in the morning and I check messages to see if anybody called me or tried to text me while I was asleep last night. And I spent too much time on there in the mornings before I got to go to work. But uh, it's part of my life and I love it. And it, uh, I don't want I'm not quite willing to give it up. Yeah, Facebook's a double-edged sword. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you love it or you hate it, but uh, you're not going to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, but they they want to get rid of us conservatives, though. Well, you know, I don't know that I'm conservative. I just feel like I'm a, a regular, hard-working, honest, red-blooded American male. Uh, you know, and more more importantly, I'm a human. But. I work my butt off every day, mm. six days a week, three hundred, you know, fifty-two weeks a year, and I don't expect anybody to give me anything. Yet, I see all these people in the world today that want everything given to them for nothing, and oh, we got politicians that are considering doing it so they can get reelected. Well, you know, you need to take back your man card because somewhere along the line you lost it, and all of this crap just. I don't even watch the news. I used to live watching the news every day. I come home, take care of my wife, make dinner, watch the news, and then go to bed. And now watching the news, all it does is make me angry. Yeah, F- fake news media. You know, it just it, they can't even begin to tell the truth, but yet they think that people like me are stupid enough that they can convince us that we don't know what we're thinking is wrong. We don't know what they're talking about, so they're going to tell us what we're thinking and what we're talking about. And and ain't nobody ever been able to do that with me before, so why is it going to start now? Yeah. But once this election's over, COVID will go away. And hopefully we can get back to a regular, uh, normal lifestyle and... You know, I know who I'm voting for in this election, and I know why I'm voting for him. And uh, I hope that uh, the election goes the way I want it to, but uh, whether it does or not, life's going to have to go on. It'll just, who's elected will determine how it affects us, I guess, you know. It, uh, and it's too bad that uh, that's the situation we're in, but it is. And uh, there's nothing I can do to change it, but... I told my wife, I said, you know, I could probably run for governor and beat Gavin Newsom right about now. (laughs) (laughs) How would that be? Daniel Cottrell in politics. And the the first thing they'd be doing is trying to teach me how to speak. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, this is Tanya, Dave's wife. Look, if you're going to run for governor. It it does. It irritates me. And uh, so I try not to think about it that much. But, uh. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Tanya, Dave's wife. If, Hi. If you're thinking about running for governor, make sure you get good sponsors. <laughs> uh, I'm not thinking about running for anything. I'm, I'll be doing good if I can just successfully drive this race car once we get it done. <laughs> okay, good luck. <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, I don't know, man, it, uh. You know, what's funny is uh, you can't even talk about what's going on in the world without offending anybody. And, you know, I've never worried about offending anybody in my life. It, uh, if I offended somebody and it bothered them that much, I'd probably tell them I was sorry, but get over it. I am who I am. And I've had to censor myself on Facebook to the point that it almost I almost lost my job. Wow. I got called in and I got written up from corporate over a post on Facebook that wasn't mine. It was one that I shared and just commented on. And I looked at Tim and I said, are you serious? And, you know, understanding that I'm in a position where I got a wife with MS that I take care of. And so I, if it was just me, I'd have probably told him to shove that job right up their ass. But uh, I, it's not just me and... So I can't do that. I have a, I have a wife that loves me and depends on me and and looks up to me and you know some of the one of the hardest things I've ever had to listen to is her tell me you've got to shut up you've got to keep this stuff to yourself and you got to quit talking about this stuff and uh, that 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 was hard for me to do but I 
done it. And uh, the closer this uh, presidential election day gets, I'm slowly kind of coming back out of my shell. And I, every once in a while, I'm getting uh, comments from people. There's the Dan we know, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, oh boy, I better, uh, I better not get out of control. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, uh, it's crazy, brother. It's, it's way too crazy. You know, now, you would think if people love this country enough, you know who they should vote for. But, you know, unfortunately, it's not that way at all. No, it's not. And it's, uh, I don't understand why. I don't understand where it changed. I don't understand where Americans changed so much that they've allowed us to be in the position that we're in now. But it took a, it took months for me to get to a point where I could function without getting angry about it all. You know, and it, my dad used to tell me, "Don't worry about something you can't control." And I had to realize that I can't control this. All I can do is vote the way that I feel is the right way to vote, and hope that uh, more of the country sides with me than with the side I don't want involved. Personally, I think we should all go to the racetrack and settle it on the starting line. Yeah. And winners win and losers lose. No second place trophies. You just, uh, losers go home with second place money, but only winners get a trophy. And uh, I want to get a lot more of those. Yeah. So, And if I get a lot more of those, my wife will really love me then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I can already see the first trophy though. She she probably won't let that sucker go and let me even touch it. Man, this is mine. You ain't getting it. <laughs> yep. But we're pretty excited about it. And uh, yeah. right now though, I'm more excited about our next fishing trip. To tell you the truth, because uh, that last fishing trip, it was a good one, man. It was one that we'll never forget. So Dan, if if you can have the have the drag racing fans remember one thing about you, what would that one thing they remember about you? What would you want that to be? Yeah, that I had a lot of fun, and that boy could I cook at the racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that, that dude, it, everything it's about. If I'm not enjoying it, I'm not doing it, and uh, I don't know that uh, I've ever had a bad time at a racetrack. And uh, it, uh, I'm glad to, that my wife's going to get to experience that because uh, it, uh, if everyone could experience it, I think it could change the world. I really do. It, uh, drag racing is a uh, is a big giant family that uh, when new new fan new people are introduced to it, they become fans and they become family, and uh, a lot of them actually get involved and get their hands dirty and I'm looking forward to uh, having the opportunity to introduce uh, some young kids to it and even some adults that uh, have never gotten to do it. Uh, the way I see it is uh, I want everybody to have a chance to sit in the seat of my car and, and, and take a look out the windshield from behind that big old blower and, and get their picture taken and have something to brag about for as long as they want to brag about it. And, uh, I want everybody to be able to share my experiences, and uh, even if I don't know you. And uh, I watched uh, I watched Leroy do that with uh, with all people, and uh, he he was the best. Leroy was was one of the best showmen that I ever knew in drag racing. And uh, uh, I mean, you can't compare him to John Force by any means. But uh, when Leroy was at the racetrack, he had always had nothing but a smile. And the worst day of drag racing. Is still better than a, a bad day at work. And a bad day of fishing is better than any any day at work. I don't know about that. I, bad day <laughs> of fishing really makes me mad. <laughs> uh, uh, I, one thing I can't stand is that, that drive home after a bad fish trip. We should have left five hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then my wife will say say that, and I'll say I don't want to hear it from you. <laughs> but. It is fishing, racing. I got the. I am completely and totally blessed, man. I got. I got a cousin that has taken a name my dad made famous in drag racing, uh, running Pro Gas in the uh, in the eighties, and uh, 
and continued it one more step into the Nitro Pro Funny Car ranks for Nostalgia Funny Car, and Bobby is just 